The title of today's video is the uh, is ideas for tackling forest fires. When I was a child, I had chronic asthma. I had severe difficulty breathing. And it was the most horrible feeling ever. I remember getting sick every winter, having to ingest really bad tasting medicine, and on top of that, getting injections that were really big. So as the fires are raging across North America and impacting the air quality, I'm thinking about all the people who are impacted by this. As well, I'm thinking, what do the climate models suggest and a uh, series of ideas for solving the problem. Before I begin, I must highlight that the ideas shared are not vetted and so proper uh, protocols and care has to be needed to validate the ideas from the perspective of safety, security, sustainability, as well as unintended consequences. There's also the potential of bad actors modifying one or the combination of ideas for purposes that are universally bad or destructive. As well, there is the probability that implementing one of these ideas could create a newer problem. And with that being said, let's get into the possible set of solutions. The easiest and most safest option that I personally can think of from my limited perspective is to leverage robotics and equip robotics with fire extinguishers. The image that you see is from a company called Boston Dynamics. I don't know anyone working there. I'd love to work with them in the future, but that is not why I'm making this video. Um, so yeah, I, to come back to the idea, it's a very simple idea is to have refillable fire extinguishers provided to a robotic structure whereby that robotic structure can be remotely operated to tackle a fire more accurately and in, in, a, in a more targeted manner. To build up on this idea, same robot or a similar robot, but instead of a carbon-based or water-based fire extinguisher, I was, I was looking into DNA as a possible alternative for putting out fires. So this would be in the domains of genetics and synthetic biology, mostly biomaterials, which I don't know anything about. But if you Google biological material fire retardant, then you come up with a simple set of research papers, including research papers from NIH. And let me show you what one of these research papers looks like. So if you Google uh, this, what I just did here, then you will come across a whole bunch of research papers and I've linked to one of them through the research, sorry, through NIH and uh, I haven't ingested the research itself, but um, this could be a possible way in the future to put out fires. I don't know how far that is, depends how you look at it. That's another conversation. I won't we'll get into that right now. So biomaterials provided there is a way to do this safely and security with protocols in place, biosafety pro protocols in place, could be a way to put out fires sustainably and hygienically in the future without any uh, damage to the, without uh, poisonous or harmful damage to the ecology. On the topic of biomaterials, I don't want to go too deep into this, but 
it's my understanding that this process can be energy intensive. So options would include new age projects like Heliogen. Again, I'd love to work with them. I have no association with any idea or sorry, institution or company shared here. Uh, modular nuclear could be an option, but safety protocols have to be in place and security. Space, space solar power could be an option. There could be many options. It depends on how much of the material we require. So I think at, that, at this point it starts becoming more of a predictive analytics and data and uh, image like uh, satellite imagery uh, and uh, historical data related kind of question. It becomes a data science question. And depending on how things are changing, you could predict with some level of certainty that you're going to need this much biomaterial or whatever material next year. Coming back to the set of ideas, uh, same similar set of robots, inclusion of a robot called Atlas. These are registered trademarks of a company, Boston Dynamics. This is their property. I've actually either taken images that are free or from their website. Um, but this idea is to have a helicopter uh, deliver a larger bucket of source where a, um, uh, a series of robots like Atlas would then literally haul that bucket, it would be a very sturdy bucket, so they would haul this bucket close to the area where the flame is and then in combination, in concerto, I guess, these, uh, these teams of robots that are remotely operated will put out the fire using some kind of a hose. That's the same idea. I've only replaced the previous helicopter with the, if I can say this name right, Sikorsky which is a helicopter that was originally designed by the United States Army. So this helicopter has the capacity to, uh, I think it's 20,000 pounds and more, I could be wrong, but, but basically in a single flight, the helicopter has the capacity to carry a lot of load. The next idea is to, the next, next idea applies to an area that's in more like kind of like a, um, you, it's a mountainous region or like maybe hilly area and uh, there's a fire raging somewhere that's like the plains or basically more like an elevation. So because of the terrain, it, it may not be that easy to put send fire trucks there, or maybe the road is inaccessible. You'd have, you'd have to block off the road anyway. So I'm looking at the image right here, right now. This is what I'm referring to. Um, so somebody who's visually impaired or low on vision, uh, basically you have, imagine you have a hilly area. There's a road kind of going through the hilly area. And you want to get to uh, terrain where the fire is raging. So what you would do in a scenario like this is, you would first uh, install a makeshift pole of a certain height. So you, through autonomous trucks or trucks in general, you will deliver a pole to the site. Then the robot, like an Atlas, will haul, or uh, maybe a helicopter can uh, drop the other end of the pole to uh, close to where the fire is. So let's look at the green dots now. So there's a green dot here and imagine there's a line going all the way here, a zip line. Okay. Um, so if you don't know what a zip line is, a zip line is something you can do for pleasure. It can also, well it's not really a zip line, but you can have a steel wire that you can have a gondola uh, kind of running through it. And uh, the idea is that with these makeshift construction, um, 
And I was thinking of other ideas too, like you know how to actually move it if if there's not enough enough declination. I think that's what it's called when you have a decline. Uh, I was thinking of like other ways to move the thing. It could move itself on the wire or maybe other contraptions. But the idea is to basically uh, install the pole and then have a zip line running all the way through close to the side of the fire and either end of these uh, poles can move. So this one if it was here then two hours later it could be installed here or maybe a kilometer away or something like that. And same with the other end. It could be uninstalled and reinstalled at a location where it makes sense to do so. It could be five kilometers away at that. The provided this is a more cost and time and energy effective and safe means to do so. Now, don't worry about the water running here. I wasn't really thinking that you can extract the water just from here, but that could be another idea. I wasn't really thinking that. Uh, the red arrow indicates that this is the direction of the fire. So actually this dot should be somewhere over here because you don't want this. Well, it shouldn't be in the, in, the, in the thick of the fire. So I think I shared too much. Um, I don't have a script. So The idea is through the zip line or the gondola, you could then transfer a larger amount of water close to the fire whereby then the team of robots is going to be deployed close to the fire so that they can attach hoses to a structure that's filled with water. Could look like this, could look something different. And uh, put out the fire in a more targeted manner versus a helicopter just dumping the fire on it. Because that's what we have right now, right? Which is not a bad solution, but it could be more targeted when you have multiple you know you could even make them go in a circle so you could have one node here another here another here and all the way back so you just kind of have a daisy chain kind of just water coming non-stop and you just attach the hose put out the fire right depends on the severity of the fire right so this is one idea other ideas involve the use of outer space I won't be sharing these ideas um, as space, space situational awareness uh, from my very uneducated civilian perspective is not at the capacity whereby these ideas can be entertained or introduced. I have other ideas on YouTube because there were fires in California two years ago and these ideas were mostly in the domains of uh, ground-based robots in the shape of like a crab or like some kind of a robot that walks on all fours. I think that was the gist of the idea. There are other ideas there too. And I was also thinking about uh, the same topic but more from a process and innovation perspective with a note saying that, an yeah, important note indicating that uh, obviously, these ideas are not being introduced to distract AFWorks from the critical work that they may be doing. Um, so I don't know how things are going to work out in regards to climate and where the responsibility is going to lie. But some, I feel, I'm not sure, some rapid way of testing solutions would be required. Maybe detailed simulations will also be required in order to predict a lot of these events in advance and other solutions. Part of the solution could involve, now this is more on the kind of, because I was talking processes, is more on the design of the model, like what the model will look like. So crowdfunding, sorry, crowdsourcing and again crowdfunding uh, could be a way of the future. Um, my sense is a lot of the ways crowdsourcing is done right now, unless it's specifically like we're talking crowdfunding, the way crowdsourcing works is not, it doesn't 
empower the contributor. It's a winner take all kind of a model because we live in a scarcity basis the model. Anyways, I won't go into the details, but but uh, I feel people who people could work really hard and be really active on in a crowdsourcing platform, but somebody else could be leeching their hard kind of like you know, their meaningful contributions and then you know whether it's in the open source domain or what have you uh, I don't think the incentive structure for crowdsourcing overall I don't say this from a NASA or government of Canada perspective but overall an earthly construct it's not it, it doesn't it doesn't recognize and reward the contributions of the of the few or the many um, that being said, incentive competitions could be designed uh, to help solve the problem highlighted. Whether it's uh, integrating NASA Space Apps Challenge as part of the solution. Um, I've been a mentor for NASA Space Apps at least twice. Uh, once in person, one online. And uh, uh, on the government of Canada side, there's uh, I think at least one, maybe two incentive competition models that I'm aware of. I've not participated in them, so I couldn't provide feedback. But there are many incentive competitions around the world. But my uh, my comment from earlier is still valid. I think the incentive structure needs to be thought through on how individual contributions are going to be rewarded. There is a secret sauce to what I've shared. So I was following a uh, method called Mad Libs, which is like a one, one minute startup pitch. I'm not pitching a startup, I'm just sharing ideas. Um, the secret sauce would involve a, is an actual development from DARPA which I will not share here, but if you are an innovator and you want to solve climate or any issue that's for the well-being of all, uh, I will verify your identity, check your references, and I'd be happy to share this with you. The thing that I've highlighted here is actually in the open, it's available publicly, but I just want to highlight it here for safety and security reasons. I must highlight that I'm a civilian, as you may see on the slides, and I have no affiliation, I have zero affiliation with DARPA, US, uh, sorry, any military or government as of yet. So the DARPA application combined with innovation models from the world's most innovative institutions like AFWorks, uh, without distracting them, could be integrated as part of the set of ideas not that these ideas the ideas that have been shared so far are are not going to be implemented the way they are so you're going to execute you're going to pivot and the solution however it evolves in the future could turn out to be very different from what you see on the slides like paypal did not start off as a way to send money to each other using your email it started as something very different um, you know, other examples but I won't get into them uh, that was a random example that came to my head but uh, I mean the pivots will take you to a different model like a solution but this uh, framework from DARPA and like thinking about things from a model perspective would be the secret sauce. Now if you can solve this problem, you believe you can solve this problem, or you think you can solve this problem, or even if you doubt yourself, I can help you. The thing is, you got to pick up the phone and call me, right? So if you believe you can, if there is just a little bit of a something here like you you you, can, you want to help solve this problem you can solve this problem I want to help you I can help you define the problem I can help you validate I can help you dis do a customer discovery 
kind of framework, mostly through Steve Lang, because I'm going to get you to buy the Startup Owner's Manual and, and read it and apply it. But in addition to the dis customer discovery, validation, and customer development aspect, I can help, help you find funding. I cannot guarantee you funding. I can help you find funding. I can share other information and good knowledge with you also. And it's my intention that you, whoever may be watching this, can scale your endeavor and that you can create a great company where your employees are happy, where your customers are happy, where their development is obviously sustainable, ethical, and it's a net benefit to the biosphere and to all of the creatures, including humans living in it. Please give me a call, okay? Don't delay. Uh, let's help create a world where people can breathe better. But I can tell you from experience, when you cannot breathe, it is the worst feeling in the world. And I don't want anyone experience that. I don't want anyone in the world experiencing that. There will be forest fires. You gotta have a discussion in regards to how we build our cities and towns. But um, that's another conversation. I won't get into that right now. Um, if you can help solve this problem, I want to help you. I want to help you any way I can. I want to empower you to help solve this problem. Because it's a problem that also impacts me. My phone number is on the slides. If uh, you cannot get through, uh, get if you are living in another country, you don't have long distance, you can add me on WhatsApp. If none of those options are applicable, you can hop on LinkedIn, and here is a direct link to my profile on LinkedIn. I'm pretty bad with email, so I won't share my email. Plus, I don't want to don't want to put my email out there. I think that's the last slide. Thank you very much. Remember, the world needs your energies. And there's a lot of people right now struggling to breathe in this environment, uh, which is toxic to them. Uh, for you and a lot of others, it, uh, you know, it could be a discomforting thing. Um, but for others, it's a major it could be a life and death situation. So let's solve this problem. I don't know which idea, like it's not that you have to take this idea. Any idea, I will help you uh, define it, you know, run it through the stages, share initial set of resources with you to find the funding. I'll put you on a path where yeah, the resources are out there. So I'll, I'll, I've, been an, I've been an entrepreneurship for almost a decade now. Uh, it's going to be a decade next year. Mine is a timeline work that happens on, but I'm still working on the startup on the side. So I can, I can, I, I'm very happy and willing to share everything I know with you within reason, right? You got to, you got to do the work. So don't delay. Make sure to call me, reach out to me, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.